Hello gamers, welcome to another episode of Get Your Game Sense Out. My name is Bios, your annoyed average gamer. Oh boy, I'm Sebastian Nation and welcome to my fun house. I actually freaking hate you. <laughs> uh. And today we are going to be talking about our playthrough of Bleeding Edge, the beta on Xbox. Okay, first, before we even start, um, F the haters, because, you know, everyone says Xbox has no games, but let you know, this is an Xbox exclusive, which also means it's on PC. But yeah, we got the games, boys. Let's go. All right, so Bleeding Edge is a multiplayer online combat video game being developed by British developer Ninja Theory and published by Xbox Studios. It's basically a class-based 4v4 pvp game think of overwatch but 4v4 and all that more melee instead of shooter also third person also third person yeah it was very very similar to overwatch or like paladins or whatnot but again the biggest difference is that it's in third person and uh you know we're not really shooting guns there are characters with guns but it's um more melee centric and you really get up and personal and i love the third person i love third person games so it's really like bringing new energy to me playing this type of game again. I'm glad I've been overwatching forever. Yeah, it is. It is. It was really refreshing playing it. But um, all right. So let's start off with our general thoughts after playing. Um, General thoughts. I'm going to say I did like it quite a bit. Um, Let me see. I don't know. It was I like the character designs for all the characters. You know, we had um, El Dorado. And he was like some giant Mexican guy with some giant machete and he's going after them. And there's like the poster boy character who's the tracer of the game. His name is Damon or Demon. And he's literally just like a ninja graffiti artist. Like that's all you need to know about him. And he literally just goes around and he can spray you, put you to sleep. He has a sword. And the, 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 the controls for the game are quite simple. You know, it's literally just one button. Like, you know, on Xbox, it's just smashing X. But you can um, reroute the controls. I did find that out later on because I might switch um, the melee to be RB because I feel like that's more natural for me. Um, but yeah, it's just like all the characters were very distinct and they had a really good different play style. Oh, and one thing that's very different than other um, types of like these uh, class-based shooters is that you can get like a little hoverboard because it's a giant map. It's not like very like linear map, I guess I want to say. Um, since it's a very large map, you get this little hub board that you can jump on to get around much quicker. And of course, if you can evade the enemies that are chasing, you can get on this board to go back much quicker, which I did like quite a bit. You know, what did you yeah, think? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very similar. It's, uh, it's very similar to a MOBA. So um, typically MOBAs would have some sort of mount or something you could ride to get a, across the map much quicker. But for me, I... I did enjoy a lot of the characters. They're very unique, very pretty crazy. Some of them is stuff that you would generally see, but there are some crazy characters like that lady that's uh, she's built into a bike and she has these chainsaw blade things and she's really quick and really, really annoying. And she's um, very similar to Roadhog because she can like grapple you with the chain. Yeah. Yes. Just like Oh Roadhog. my God. Yeah, but um, they in, in a lot of ways they do stuff right. Like there's this girl, like the mecha that you're talking about. She can lay out these turrets, and the turrets just add on to damage. They're not like very overwhelming in terms of damage. Like you could take them out no problem if the team is not trying to defend them or anything. But um, besides everything, the game plays really well. Has a couple of game modes. The what was the 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 the, the gas? Not the gas. The energy ones like collect and distribute whatever oh yeah it was um power cells you collect power cells um yeah you, you collect power cells and then you, you distribute them to get points for your team and then they have the traditional capture the point a b and c but it's a bit different because they're they're locked off and they go they get locked up a yeah. period of time and sometimes there's only one point available so then both teams are forced to go to that one point to cap and then really fight amongst each other so it's not all three a b and c they're open at all three times you know right okay so what were your dislikes for bleeding edge um i guess my dislikes would probably like they could definitely have a better ping system the ping system was not very 
Um, it wasn't very user friendly in my opinion. Um, yeah. I, the camera was kind of disorientating. At first, you know, when we first started playing, you did say like, oh, you wish the camera was a bit closer. But I then after we played for about an hour or two, I was like, if the camera was closer, this game would be like very hard to control because you couldn't see anything. Um, so I kind of wish like, at first I was like, I wish the camera would be locked onto you as you're playing. But then I just got more natural, like rotating the camera around me. But I don't know, something about the camera is just off with me. Um, I think it was my two biggest things. I don't know, maybe something will come to me as you go. So you can go ahead and tell me what your dislikes were. I have quite a few dislikes. Oh, so, <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it's like a bug or something. Maybe it's just me. But I feel like when you're playing on the capture, capture the objective, I like everybody would try to find where the next one is. And for me, I could almost never see it for some reason. Like, oh, A just opened up and I'll just look around like, where is it? Like, there's, um, they need to well, add it's on the something. Map. It's on the map. It's mm-hmm. there on the map. I probably didn't well, yeah, know but... It. On the map, there's like when you see the objectives, they're like gray, but when they're gonna be open, they turn into a light gray, and when they're open, they turn yellow. I couldn't really see that, like, and I'm playing on a map. I'm playing in a map that I never played before. I feel like they need to have it where it's more noticeable, like some sort of arrow or something like that, so that you know where to go. Also, when um, the when the objective is open, so like if it's A, B, or C, like you see the giant A appear on your screen. Yeah. Right, they it, it yeah no, it did I, no for the I, for the capture it's a smaller A for the distribute when you're p- distributing power cells it's a big yellow A or B. Uh, it's not for the for the other ones it's, it's like a small red letter, so I think they need to increase that. Um, I don't like how I I don't know if it's because of the character but there's like a couple of characters that can basically lock you in a combo and even though you have evasions they are so quick to just jump on you again basically having you waste your um evasion meter which is another feature that you have stamina um the stamina feature i feel like that can be toned down a little bit just to give a little bit more balance because for example if the ninja guy jumps on you usually he just has so many abilities to just continue jumping on you and you were having issues with the ostrich lady (laughs) My issues with her is that she can run away so easily. Not that she was like jumping me. She was just she was oh, so Oh, just bad. getting away. Yeah, she got away so quickly and so easily. Um, what else that I did not like? Um, let me see. Oh, I the feel of it. I think I don't. I don't really think they have enough time to really improve the aesthetic, like the menus and such. But um. The, for some reason it gave me so much of a mobile game vibe because i have a few games on my phone that have the exact same aesthetic like exactly the way it looks and i just feel like for a console game the menus and stuff like that should be a little bit more out there um a lot more obviously it's a, it's a, it's a you know it's a console game it's supposed to be way more improved way more dynamic much more than what they have currently it just feels even though it is a demo beta i really hope that for the final game that they improve that um, I feel like there wasn't enough music most of the time. Um, oh. I was trying to keep out for the music. I, in the actual game, I don't think we needed music during the actual game. You know, like in Overwatch, there's no music until like you're about to win the match. You know, like when it's an like overtime, that's when music starts. There's no music throughout the course of the game. You know, um, so I was okay with no music being played. So I was like, oh, you know, you're right. There is no music, but then there was so much like when you're in combat. You don't need music because you're like you're focusing. You're doing call outs, you know. Like you don't need music. What else is there? Oh, the um. Uh, now that this is a complaint, but more of a confusion. You know how like when we finish a game, they would have like this slow mo play rewind thing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand if it was showing what you did or if they're showing because like sometimes it'll show who did like the best or who did something really cool and then other times it would just show people if they're wanting to make it a play of the game or something just make it a play of the game we don't need to have all these different run throughs just have whoever did the best in the match show that person and move on i didn't really understand what they were doing there um so yeah at first it was kind of confusing for me too but i think you know after i played it for a bit um with the first one that you see is the last play of the game 
you know, since either the last kill or the last objective taken, or like when they're de depositing the the last um, power cells, the cell. right? Uh -huh. But so there's it's so the first one is the last play of the game. Then they sh the second round is like highlights. You see a bunch of um, you see a, a collection of highlights, whether it's yours highlights or it's like another team member's highlights, or it, can, it might even be the enemy team's highlights as well. Yeah. Like it's like a really good kill that they did. You know, like a really like powerful uh, combo they did. You know, and then from there it goes to stats. You know? I wish that screen was a bit longer. I wish that's something I didn't like. Like the stats were cool, but like I wish I could access the stats after the game is finished. You know, like when I'm playing Halo or if I'm playing mm -hmm. Destiny, I could see the stats of the game even after the game is finished. You know, like you only have like 30 seconds to, to see the stats, and that's if um you don't look at the highlights. You know, final play. You know. Like you can go gotcha. ahead and see um, uh, like your general stats on your profile, but you can't see your stats for that specific game unless like you quickly look at it. You're in the game. Yeah, unless you're in the game, exactly. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think it's also a bug too. The chat feature wasn't really working all that well. I couldn't yeah. get it open so that I could type something in the chat. And again, yeah, I also agree with you for the ping system for you to say, um, group up with me, heal me over here it's it's really in a weird place it's not really user friendly that does need to be changed as well i just gotta um, say that um to the audience that bios is only mad about the chat feature because he was trying to be very toxic <laughs> brand new game he was trying to be toxic in this brand new game listen, bring the toxicity listen, with him so listen, thank listen. god the chat was not working so we don't need listen, that Linda. in 2020 listen okay 2020, we're let me explain right, myself okay let yeah. me explain to myself. How would you feel as you're playing a game <laughs> and a character ults you and his ultimate is he's able to possess you and make you jump off the freaking map? I want that character dead, deleted, erased, out of existence. That was so annoying. And we won. I'm glad I won and I'm glad that I was being toxic because he he needed to know. Never possess me and make me jump off the map ever again. You see that guy? Never he admits him being toxic. He's a toxic player. And he was literally like screaming, suck my nuts! Suck my nuts! He's like, the chat is not working! And like, as soon as we got out of the game, it's, oh, now the chat is working. Now I can say, suck my nuts. You know? So just on like that clip, that's why he's mad about the chat. Because he didn't use it the whole time until it was time to yell at somebody. My handle is not your annoyed average gamer for nothing. Okay. Oh, please. Your handle is bias. Okay? <laughs> Oh, so that's another thing we could talk about. The ultimates. How do you feel about them? Because they have like this cool feature where you can pick one or the other. Mm -hmm. What were your favorite ones? Okay, so that's a really good feature I did like in the game quite a bit. So every character I'm in the game, and there's 11 characters, all had two ultimates. Which, before I even continue about the ultimate themselves, I like the hope of um, as the game is continuing and progressing, instead of you know adding a new character, a new map, or whatever, it just gives characters more ultimates. You know, if you already have two what's this them from stopping from giving you three ultimates or four or five ultimates per character which to me brings a lot more diversity already but yeah so i was playing el bastardo a lot and i really liked um so the two ultimates he had was one ultimate you could be invulnerable like unkillable for five full seconds and your damage goes up sorry and then there was another ultimate where um he makes this giant ring around him and he uh Everyone in that ring takes extra damage and you get extra shields. Because as he hits people, he gets shields, which is really dope. Oh, he's a tank character, which I forgot to go with you. But yeah, so it was just so dope. When there's like a big cluster of people, I pop my ultimate, I start doing the wave spin, and I'm just like doing ultimate damage to everyone around me. It's so good, you know? And there's like Damon, who I went into a bit, the ninja guy. He has this one shadow strike ability where he makes this giant ring around him as well. Everybody who's in that ring will start like slicing and dicing, kind of like Genji would do. But you know, with Genji, you would have to go and attack them. But this you could hold the hold the button, and everybody around you takes damage. Of course, if there's more people in the circle, less damage is spread out. But if it's like one person, you can do some serious damage to them. So I like all the different ultimates. So, you know, like Zero Cool, who's pretty much the Lucio ripoff, which is legit Lucio, like <laughs> everything about him. He has the same origin. The same origin. He's from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Into um music. This guy's a gamer instead of a DJ. But, like the same exact abilities. He has a sound barrier ultimate. You know, he has two ultimates. His ultimate is 
He can create this giant um like uh, pro extra protection, the sound barrier for everybody, or um he can give you one up. You know that's the very game thing. You get an extra life. So if you die, you get you're immediately revived. So you don't really even die. You just like get full health. You know. But yeah, another couple of the kicks. I liked the ultimate system. What about you? For me, um, yeah, I didn't really play too many characters. It looks like each ultimate is like one that's a very oppressive ult, and the other one is more supportive. Like, for example, the witch lady that I ended up kind of being my main. She has an ultimate where she does like a Kamehameha, like cloud that follows people and does like huge explosive damage. And her other ultimate is where she'll teleport to any enemy on the map or that one that's close by and stun them, which is not really cool as ultimate, but it supports your team in the sense that they're stunned for a longer period of time than a normal stun so that your team can actually jump on that person. Like maybe to stop someone from escaping if you use one of her abilities, which is like a cage and um, or someone else that would like freeze them or something. This is just like an extra you're not leaving type of ability. But uh, I don't uh, know if, how I feel. Uh huh. What? I wanted to mention one more character in the ultimate Nico. She's like this African warrior. Um, kind of. I see the DPS healer, which I really like the combo of that. So her ultimate, she has two, of course. One of them is that she can give out this giant beam of heals, a la like a uh, mercy, you know. But, like, no, she's... it's more like um Moira, I would say. Um, oh yeah, Moira. Okay, yeah. Um, she's very much like Moira. She gives out this giant beam of heal, and she can pass it on. So she can select multiple characters. Um, and her other ultimate, she can make her whole enemy team invisible. I mean, her whole ally team invisible. And like, you also get light heals. So it's not full heals, so you get healed a little bit, but your whole team goes um, invisible. And you're invisible for like 10 seconds, or if you like initiate a combat to get out of the invisibility. And we noticed last night that um, it works across it's the huge. whole entire map. The whole yeah, map. Yeah, it's a huge range. Yeah, and um, Bios was saying, oh, it must be a bug. And I'm like, I don't think it's a bug. It seems pretty good to me. You know, because we could be anywhere. Like, she was on the other side of the map, but we could be doing a 2v2 with two other players, and if she um, used that ult, we could use that to get out of that situation. You know, imagine if we were coordinating it. You know? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I just, I just found it weird, like, you know, like, she's nowhere near us, and her thing is still affecting us. So we'll see how that is. Yeah, so I don't know if they can actually go into giving these characters more and more ultimates because stuff like that takes time and development unless sure. you know, maybe they're doing it already. Um, but it can also like take away from new characters coming in, you know, like, oh, this character comes in with two abilities while everyone else has like five or six, you know, it's like, why would I play oh. this character when I could play one of these other guys? Okay, no, but no, 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 no. Okay, I see what you're saying. But to me, it's like, oh, instead of getting a new character this season or like this three months period, um, but they're not ready for character. Yeah, I feel like something like as patching a new, the current existing character with new ultimates would be just as um, appealing. And your excuse of, like, oh, why would I play a new character? Of course, everyone's going to want to play a new character, even if the other characters have five ultimates. It's a brand new character, it's a whole new moveset, a whole new... No, ultimate. yeah, they're new, but I'm know? talking about like once they get settled in. Yes, I mean, okay, but even if they get settled in, there are two ultimates, they're still new ultimates compared to like the other players three or four ultimates you know it doesn't matter like i don't really have a problem i see what you're saying but like i don't think that's big of a deal if people want to play that new character they're gonna play it you know mm. um okay what do you say about the balance of the game like do you think the game is properly balanced or do you think like it's a little bit overpowered in one area or the next because in this game i think yeah, this game is definitely a lot more team reliant than, let's say, Overwatch, where you can have your own special moment as any of the characters. In this game, you if you're by yourself, you're nine times out of ten gonna die unless your team is with you. So, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, we were talking about that a little bit when we were playing yesterday. Um, I kind of mm -hmm. agree with what you're saying that you know this game is much more team reliant. You're like, oh, you were saying that Overwatch was very famous because you could have your like your solo moments of really being the hero. And of course, it's first person. So that's what is some of the qualities that made it great. But to me, I also like these elements of it being very team I like the third person. So um, I don't know, like in a 1v1, it depends on the situation. In a 1v1, you could definitely go for it. You know, like when I was playing El Bastardo, I could take on a demon or like that witch lady pretty easily. Nobody you know the tank. But um, I did fight when I was playing Demon quite a bit. I don't know. When it's a 2v1, you're almost 
always gonna lose unless um unless uh, yeah. uh they're both low already or if you have a yeah. power up you're almost always gonna but you know they can combo lock you but you, yes. you can get slammed on the floor like there's a second you're not doing damage you know what i mean so yeah you could really be affected i don't know like i think the balance is there but the balance is only when you're with your whole team you know in a 2v1 situation you're not gonna be balanced i mean most games if it's 2v1 you know, I guess you know, if you're playing like a shooter, if you're really good at dodging or whatever, you know, um, like in Destiny, I guess. But I don't know. I mean, you know, it's just, but it, if you're your super, it, you might be able to do something. May, yeah, but it's like you really have to really work with someone because like we were having so many moments where we would get, even when we're in a team fight, we would lose because it's like, oh my gosh, we have to jump this healer. If we don't kill this healer, we're not gonna do anything. So like two or three of us has to really, really focus on this healer and the team has to super focus on defending their healer. And you know, it's like, you know, like you can't just send one person to go after them because um, uh, they, because everybody has maneuverability to get away and regroup. So, I mean, I like, like that. I have footage. I like that, I like that yeah. type of thinking where like, okay, like remember when I was playing with you yesterday, we were like, okay, who you're going for with tech attack the same person. And I like the idea of having to rely on each other and you know, that no one person can do it. Like sure, Overwatch has those elements, but I, I liked it more in this game where it's like, it made me want to stick together. Like, okay, I'm following you or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. and then granted, you know, we're in a team fight, no one is dying or everyone's just getting house. Like, okay, we need to focus on one person, you know, cause nothing is happening. I like that type of like camaraderie, that, that type of work instead of one person just doing everything. You know? All right. Yeah, I hear you. All right. So what do you think? Let's talk quickly about the modding system and the cosmetics. Okay. Um. Okay. That's really good. I'm happy to bring that up. Um, the modding at first was kind of disorientating. There was no like tutorial on how the modding really worked, but it wasn't until I was about like, a few hours in and I was really like just putting mods left, right and center, but I figured it out. So I did like the modding quite a bit. Again, it gives you a um, much more, um, character um progression and character ownership remember the main reason why i stopped playing overwatch like i told you way back when is that i wasn't doing anything in overwatch sure i would level up and i'll get loot boxes but my character wasn't progressing in any sort of way you know i'm just locked like once you're like once you have some skins but okay but like sure you need golden guns but you're not progressing in any sort of way which is why i was really looking for overwatch 2 you know and like something I was also telling you, like if I always go back to Destiny, I'm always progressing my character. So before I even continue with the modding, every character you level up, you know. So there's no one level for your account. I mean, you have an account level, but every other character, you know, you can have a level one on Damon, and you can have a level four on on Maeve, and um the Demon Punk Rock, you can have a level fifteen. You know, so all the characters have yeah. different levels, which I really like. So A creates um replayability for the, all the different characters. And B, um, I like having ownership of being able to unlock all the different mods. So like for my um, El Bastardo guy, for my mod build one, I had, um, I increased my health by 120. I made my um, my death spin about 33% stronger. And there was another one where I can get like an extra 2% shield or like 5% shield. And I'm like, and that really affected the game because I don't know, it changed the, the layout of the game because I felt stronger. I felt like I was making a big difference in the modding. I did like the modding quite a bit. And like just going through all the modding for all the different characters, like for Zero Cool, you can make the bot 30% 30 30 stronger, which is quite an upgrade to make that little bot come out stronger. Or you can make the range of some of your heals go further out because that's one. Oh, that is something I dislike about the game. There's a lot of times where a lot of characters have like some sort of throwing ability. And it's like, oh, you're out of range. I'm like, what do you mean I'm out of range? I'm looking at that, you know? And like, um, so for the fact that there's mods to increase your range, I'm happy about that. But I don't like that mechanic at all. Like, you could be out of range with someone. Um, so I do like the uh, the modding. And I'll, I'll let you comment on the modding before we go ahead with the, the cosmetics. Yeah, so yeah, the modding... It's very, I would say, not subdued, but yeah, it's subtle. It's very subtle. It's not like something that will make your character too like overpowered or anything like that. It's just these nice quality of life improvements that they kind of give you in your hands. Like you said, like more health or a little bit more damage or 
um something like that uh and then you also found that you could have different um how do you say uh, 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 uh slots like uh loadouts you can have different loadouts for them mm -hmm. so that you can sh so that you can um choose like okay today i want to do it like this let me try this out and you only have three slots so it's not like in paladins where you have like five cards you can level up each card to make them super max and super ridiculous and a bunch of con nonsense but um yeah in this game you just have three you choose the three you switch them out you go to a different loadout and then you're good to go so i think it's pretty good oh and you can um, switch the mods and the loadout throughout the match too you know you can not the mod not the mod but you can switch your loadouts throughout the match if you wanted to you know you have the three loadouts if you wanted to uh, you go back to the character selection you can go if you want to go to mod build one two or three yeah. oh, i didn't know that oh Okay, that also okay. That also helps for the long, for the longevity that you play that character. Like, okay, this loadout isn't working. Let me switch to this build. That's pretty mm -hmm, cool. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. So that's good. Um, okay, but that's basically all I have for that. And then lastly, the customization. So I was thinking about it last night. Where I hope that the game comes out with skins for the characters because oh, it yeah. seems like they just that they focused on a lot of. Um, the boards that they write on that you can customize which is fine but like you said like you don't really care about the boards it was more about the effects so i really hope that they do come out with character skins no definitely for, remember for everybody that was one of the options that were um, played out so like when you're in the menu there was mods boards skins and emotes but skins was unavailable so there's definitely going to be skins um, for the game there's definitely going to be skins okay i didn't see it probably overlooked yeah, it skins um it was just like grayed out you couldn't select it Hopefully for the second closed beta, which is I think March 12th or 15th, um, you can like look at skins, hopefully. Because you know, Overwatch will let you look at the skins before the beta, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there, there is definitely skins. And then, you know, just to go a little bit more on the boards. So yeah, as we talked about earlier in the episode, there's boards that you can run around to get on the, on the map. And there's different types of boards. They don't like change your speed or anything. But there's different types of boards and you can put different types of paints on them, so different colors. And then the stickers you can purchase with um, the board to like customize the board, but who really cares because you're barely on your board. And But the only cool thing about the board is that you can have different trails as you're running away, you know? Or not running away, but as mm -hmm. you can damage real cool. But the boards themselves or whatever, you know? Yeah, but it's, 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 it's just something cool to look at, just like skins. Or do you want to comment on the, um, on the whole like credit the, the coins you were talking about? Yeah. I mean, not so much for you, but for me, I just felt... I mean, I, I couldn't understand, I guess. I didn't really know. Because, like, after playing for a few hours, I only had, like, 50 uh, credits so that I could spend on some of these cosmetics. And they're over here at 1300 I'm sitting here like, okay, I've been playing for a few hours and I barely have any... I barely have an amount to purchase anything. So it made me worried for how long you have to really grind in the game in order to get the stuff that you want, which is fine. I just think it should be reduced just a little bit or at least make it clear of like how you can get more points because you were saying that you thought you were getting more um, because you were doing the objectives more than just playing the, than just um, doing team battles. Um. Well, I, I, no, I think I was getting more because I was leveling up more. And the reason why I was leveling up more it's because um, I was doing more objective stuff. So that's my assumption, right? But um, I didn't have a problem with credits. I was getting 50 to 80 credits per match, you know? I was able to buy a board for a thousand, no, a trail for a thousand credits. Um, that bubble trail was a thousand credits. And then on top of that, I got, um, I bought a new board for like 400 credits. So I made about, maybe about 1600 credits, 1700 credits in the beta, you know? So I didn't have that same problem with you. And I could have bought some stickers. Like when they paid to finish, I still have probably like 300 credits left over. And I spent 1,400 credits, you know? Well, it, it, could, it could just be something that they could add in the tutorial, I guess, to kind of really explain sure, sure, like sure. how you can get more, like how does it work? Because for me, it really just felt really slow. Like I'm like, oh, I played for so long and I couldn't buy anything. I really I couldn't know, buy anything. I was, getting, I was racking in credits every time. And I was leveling up a lot. And I was racking in credits. <coughs> Let's see. Anything else that we could squeeze in here? I think we hit everything. Though. I think we did get everything. Overall, out of 10, what did you give the beta? 
for the beta, I give it a six. <laughs> and I don't know, I mean, I feel like we were having a lot of fun. Where's the six coming from? No, I had fun. I had fun. The game is good. I do think, you know, people should check it out when it fully comes out or check it out in the next beta. It's going to be an open beta, the next one. I'm not sure. I think it's another closed beta. Well, if you can get into it, if you have like Xbox Game Pass, you can get into it. Um, but yeah, when the game comes out, I think people should check it out. I think it, it'll be a good break from like other PvP competitive games like Overwatch and the other ones out there. But I did, yeah. But yeah, I had fun. I, I just give it a six for like the like the amount of issues that I noticed that I seen, and I re, and um, I think the game could use a lot more polish to really give it that console you know gaming experience because for me it just kind of feels like a uh not a glorified but like an expanded mobile game like if like i think i could find this game on my phone that's kind of how i feel um i can feel i can feel what you're talking about the mobile stuff um for me i'm gonna i'll give the beta a seven out of ten i had a bit better experience than you um at first when we start, first started playing i thought the games were kind of long like getting 600 points it's kind of a bit, but you know, once we were starting, like really, like when we were playing yesterday, and so I guess the people that are playing were playing for a while, they understand how the game worked. The games were getting much closer, you know? Like we met that really good tank who really knew how to play that really gi giant Hawaiian guy. Um, like people mm -hmm. were really trying to understand, how, really understood how those characters work. So the game's gotten closer with much more better mechanics. Um, so I'll give it for that. And like the biggest improvements I would want to see the game for me to make it better. It's definitely more game mode. There's only two game modes. I hope that's just a beta. You know, Overwatch launched with three game modes. I would have yeah. hoped this game comes out at least with three, you know, because two would make it, even though there's a lot of like the playability of the characters themselves, if I'm only doing two things, objective and power cells, it'll get boring. It'll get boring. Even if I have multiple characters with different skins and mods or whatever, you know? So yeah. hope, and then of course, more characters. You know, I keep going back to Overwatch because Overwatch is like the king of the class-based shooter genre right now. Um, and Overwatch launches like 20 characters, like give or take. You know, maybe like 21, either in, between 19 and 21 characters. And that was a good, a healthy amount of characters that it launched with, in my opinion. Whereas this one has 11, you know, so if it la launched with at least five more characters, I'd be okay with it. I, I don't think it is because it comes out like like March 20th or March 24th, so it's relatively soon. Um, but yeah, I definitely need to see at least the game mode. Game mode has to come, if not the characters. But yeah, I give it a seven out of ten. I had fun. It's free on Game Pass. You know, Game Pass is one of the best services out for gamers out right now. So <laughs> you glow it up. Uh, don't act like you don't love it. Okay, um, it's convenient. You're like, you're always like, oh, is it on Game Pass? Is it on Game Pass? Can I download on Game Pass? Um, but okay, but yeah, 7 out of 10, I like the game. And it's only $30, so it's not a full like $60 release. It's much yeah. more affordable. If you Very affordable. It, if you buy it on PC, you get it on Xbox. If you get it on Xbox, you have it on PC because it's an Xbox Play Anywhere title and Game Pass for free. So I think it's good. We just got to see if they're going to have a battle pass or what the microtransaction is going to look like. Please no battle pass. Please so, no battle pass. We gotta Please. see what, what kind of game, what, how they're gonna monetize it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. I was, I liked it. All right. Good for Ninja Theory. All right. So that was this week's episode. So if you guys played the game, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you guys are interested, let us know. We would like to hear from you. And we'll see you guys in the next one. And guys, always remember, get your game fence up. To